Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Wars of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our beloved Choose to Lose campaign where we're trying to beat the game on Legendary Iron Man difficulty with less equipment, uh, niche builds, less hit point, uh, less classes and of course stronger enemies with a better advent. And it is time for the last leg of this campaign. Today we're in the Guerrilla Ops Operation Red Shriek. I figured we go for automated defenses as a mission, mainly because I want uh, that other colonel having that really beefy full roster of yet another colonel in there. The run towards the end becomes very manageable. I was hoping it would be overbearing and um and more difficult but even with the like trash tier items some uh, that we're using or let's say the more uh, seldomly used items uh, we are uh, we're still having a good time it seems as if things are going in the right direction okay so zero Kim wrong planet sandman secundos heads and mike public bravo are going to go on to this mission mainly a couple of mechs and a few uh, elite specters that should be doable but it is rated as very difficult so something just something seems a bit off here can't be a chosen but it's sure as hell going to be some primes or maybe only primes who knows good time to move in and secure the area automatic defense is one of my favorite side trips typically ends up with quite a few beefy enemies and it's only the six of us so no support that's going to come in we gotta go through a train uh, kind of tile set might be interesting and got the final the final data cache over there zirke moves up nothing okay Let's use Sandman. Oak says I am to obey. Moving. And we're taking the high ground here. An alien scouting I have sight beyond vision. Okay, so Segundos moves All in. Charges. Wrong planet. Aggressive movement. Like the public bravo i think if we're moving up to here we can grapple up and that's fine also pretty solid uh, shooting angles from from that side Not a problem. and head stays back a bit of scanning protocol will at least tell us if there's something out there that we've been missing No faceless ones, but there is indeed something out here that we've been missing. Double Elite Spectre plus a Spectre Prime. As far as I'm concerned, that's a pretty nasty pack. We know a second pack is here. Okay, cool, good. So far, so good. Let's wait and see. It's just the first turn. We've relatively aggressively moved in as you order commander the target is marked okay we could use a proximity mine unfortunately that as soon as they are moving sandmen would become visible and i don't want to lose our concealment yet so how are we going to deal with that okay this here is straight up uh, would straight up pull them this here would also pull them difficult to not get in their way okay whenever I'm not a hundred percent sure about whether or not I can move there kind of using this here as a guide good Moving. 
which will allow us next turn to really move up. So that's fine. No problem, Moving boss. over there. I can grapple even up to here, so that's good. Got it. Moving. Zirke moves up. Very aggressive, but is hidden, so we're fine. Copy that. And this still stays in line of sight, or out of it, rather. And we're good. Not the most exciting turn because we haven't immediately pulled them, but trust me, it's well worth to wait sometimes. Good, so how do we want to deal with these guys? Spectre Prime could try to hit it. There is an almost 100% chance to crit if we're hitting this. It could nearly blow him away. Let's try that. 24 points of damage. Holy shit, that's fantastic. Very good, very good. They don't know where the rest of the team is. They only know of one of our operatives. Advancing. Perfect opportunity for us to overdrive. And with fairly limited resources, may I say, We got rid of that nasty, nasty Spectre Prime, and we're hopefully going to get the other two. On my way. Good, moving up. We could use Comet Protocol. But that's only seven points of damage. I think this here is better. Nice hit. Fantastic hit. Almost down. Lifting off. Hundred percent and very high percent chance for that other specter. Okay, cool. Going. Good. If we hit this guy, if we hit this guy, we can even kill it. It's potentially too risky to go and bank on a dead eye. Nah, 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 nah. that's too risky. We're going to kill the Elite Spectre. Gotcha. Straight up solid shot. Moving over here into full cover. And we're good. Tactical analysis, okay. I'll leave this here. Nice little claymore. And of course we can't hit it. Fantastic placement Saiken. Good job.
Uh, that would trigger Overwatch. Hate to do it, but potentially that's the right play. Reload. This takes away the overwatch. Unfortunately, we cannot mark him. Moving, out. Moving closer. And killing the Spectre. Wonderful. Good. Not too bad. As ordered. First peg is down. More Spectres, specifically one more Spectre Prime. If we were to hit them this turn, we could let them come all the way to here. They couldn't reach us. Well, that's not too bad. Let's try to dead eye them. Fantastic. Crit for 22 points of damage, almost one-shotting it. Imagine that together with blue screen rounds. It would just be a hail of death. Hmm. Could remove the cover, would give him some extra actions, which we don't want to. Positioning over here would not trigger the other pack. Hmm. Movement engaged. Okay, well, not generally not too bad. Secundus takes the eight protocol. I would say we're moving over. We already want to shred it. That's a good question. There's little... Well, we would give it... Let's see it from that side. We would give it an option to kind of move further ahead and then use horror or other shenanigans. On the other hand, we got to deal with it sooner or later, so might as well start with it right now. And that's a incredibly solid hit. It does exactly what I was afraid of. Good. On the other hand, panic will uh, stop beginning of next turn thanks to our resistance order and each of them only have one turn. Good, there we go. That's the remove panic I was hoping for. Reloading. We're going just going to deal with both of them for now. Don't want to take any chances.
Can't fully kill him yet. That would be a two for one. I think that's not too bad. So, this here is just me setting up for potentially some shenanigans that are going to happen next round. If we ever manage to, tr uh, to pull those guys during this turn. Moving up. marking and ah, that is unfortunate I, I almost forgot he had a stock so it triggers another spec to speed that's fine now we're at a hundred percent hit chance I said crit that was good Okay, and we do have an auto loader, so we really don't need to reload. Okay, shouldn't position ourselves here in the middle because that would trigger this pack and we don't want that to happen yet. Not yet. Soon, but not yet. Uh, which means this is really the most efficient play. Ready for the fireworks. Multiple targets neutralized. Good. Two for the price of one. This here allows us uh, to deal with Comet Protocol next turn. And Haywire Protocol this turn, because taking it over would not trigger the pack. Good. Very good. Very, very good. Okay, that was funny, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that was funny. You will never hide from me. Oh that is so not funny. <laughs> Back to put prime? Kidding me? I think they're all immune to flashbangs. Still gotta try. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, guess... I was about to say guess who's taking the overwatch shots. Um, it's actually not the Mac. It is not the Mac. Um...
We gotta remove as many of uh, them from the battlefield as possible. Good. Frontline takes the aid protocol and we will use combat protocol. Wait, what? The only one that we can see is the sector port? Okay, I guess why not? Instead of uh, wasting our turn. Sector port will waste its ammunition. Potentially run over uh, the explosive there. Okay, it's not going for the mech. That is not great. And we've just lost some part of the train here for whatever reason. Hmm. Okay, so we got some full cover. This would, however, trigger one one shot. Mm, how do we deal with that situation? That's a highly unfun situation to begin with. I think I want kill zone. But I also want to kill the enemy, so... Kill zone is not happening. Moving up. EP bomb. Alright, this better be good because that's our one chance to deal with the sector pod prime. Was that a shutdown for two? I think not for the prime. Good. Concealing. Can't hit anything. Might as well move up this turn. Secundus moves over. And let's hopefully kill that mech. Down to 1 HP. Okay, dangerous, but I want to kill that guy. Ooh, can't hit him. Okay, well that is un that's indeed unfortunate. I think the Okay, Wrath, yes. should be full cover i was hoping i could uh, go over use my pistol shot and just finish this mech unfortunately i was just short we did not cluster up which was great Continuing to hit the sector port prime. Okay, I think we need full cover somewhere. Don't want to do that from half cover. Ah, 
Half cover is almost asking for trouble, right? But what we can do, and I will do that, is we can suppress the sector port prime, making its retaliation fire less abusive, shall I say. That's a chance to immediately kill it. I'm going to take that. Not good. I'm busted. Unfortunately, a miss. Another chance to immediately kill it. Okay, it seemed to be uh, maybe it ha had been stunned not 100 percent sure it kind of looked like it would not have been but the emp grenade might just have done the trick unfortunately i think we missed the mission because that whole thing here is completely blown up <laughs> All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Yeah, one but failed at the same time. <laughs> ah, I love XCOM. And by the way, I absolutely love how the game snuck in that sector port prime. Wasn't on our radar. It just happened to be there. Elarium Core, however, is what we were looking for. Commander. Now the enemy has Viper Rounds. Fantastic. Just what I was hoping they would get. Good. Icarus Armor. Yes, please. Thank you. And I think it's, almost, uh, it's already on the highest tier, right? Yes. Mag Pistol... None of that matters. Yeah. All those people, millions of well, that was really unfortunate. Well, guess what? They got Viper rounds, so even one reason more to not get hit. Luckily, our mech is going to be immune to it. Uh, our main ranger is going to be immune to it, thanks to Hasmas Vest. It won't be easy. And our specialist, uh, thanks to the medkit. Agreed. This specimen, this being is something else entirely, something beyond anything. Good. I we think we're uh, we're more or less done here. I'll direct our efforts towards the new research project immediately, Commander. So is that the end? We're ready to move when you are, Commander. I've updated our objectives based on the latest information. We have the target. Is that the end? Question mark. Potentially. Once we control the network tower, we can finally show the world what the aliens are doing. Before we're going there, let me check something. Um so our main team. Loadout. Serpent Suit, Dark Lance, Shadow Keeper, AP Rounds. That looks pristine. Got 130 aim right here, 124 actually, but yeah, that Dr. is great. Love it. Frodo with that massive Rage Suit, 3 armor, 21 hit points, 100 aim. Holy moly, this guy is going to wreak havoc and got the stasis vest on top of it. Love it. Wards, our grenadier. I think we wanted to give her the Icarus armor. She lost a bit the Wards appeal here. Shouldn't be red, she should be yellow. Good. Back to the original deer. So she will be killing from above. Nice little beam gun. 
Advanced rocket launcher, plasma grenade. She is rocking that frost bomb because that's super important against the primes if they ever show up. Two armor is great. 17 health is good as well. Question is, are we going with a plasma grenade or an EMP grenade? I like the EMP grenades a lot, specifically against sectorpod primes. Tracer rounds were good. Can't get an, yet another grenade in here, but I think we're good with her. Good. Reckoner. 20 hit points, 2 armor. Has those nasty venom rounds. Balpup. He's going to be fun to deal with. I'm... A bit sad that we couldn't show the entire like capabilities um, of the skirmisher because the choose to lose run um, and the kind of crippled or niche build really hurt the skirmisher a lot. They have quite a few skills that are near useless or very bottom tier. Nothing is useless but very bottom tier so him not uh, managing action economy di didn't really let him shine all as much as he could. Okay, we got uh, Talon Rounds here, Warden Armor, I like the Talon Rounds, the question is what else? We originally gave him a Hazmat Vest and I think we're going to stick with that, it's just great, that extra uh, three hit points here, making him very, very tanky. Yeah, we're going to stay with that. And finally, our spark, weapon upgrade, superior scope, superior auto loader. Well, that's exactly what we want to see. So we got best in class uh, weapon or best in class upgrades, uh, Rashi, best in class upgrades, uh, the rifle and the dark lance. So everybody really has really nice weapons. I think even his weapon upgrades were, yeah pristine so i think we're ready um, the other network tower mission can still be done with a few of uh, the other soldiers given that we have some time left let's just rush through the network mission i'll get that loot and then we're we're going for the network mission Do we have anything that we want to change for the, uh, for the final mission? Vengeance could be a buff just in case someone dies. But it's not that important. It's okay. Not the end of the world. We got ourselves hair trigger and superior speed. Okay, yet again, nothing that really is going to change the needle. Time, guys, to get squad concealment, an extra soldier, everything. Just everything. We're, we're taking everything and we're not giving anything back. We won't have time to advance our research or deal with the wounded. We should only deploy once we're fully prepared. Thank you, Bradford. Thank you. If we're going to infiltrate the Advent Network Tower. We'll have to use a smaller squad. Try to draw less attention. Good. So, whom are we going to take? Uh, mm, sharpshooter here. Looks like a good idea. Specialist. Looks also like a fantastic idea. And let's use the spark. Good enough from a health perspective. And need some more oomph uh, for the front line. And beast could be that. Uh, that extra oomph. Dragon rounds. We certainly don't need a battle scanner. 
Might as well give that EMP bomb there. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Uh, Plasma Blaster is fine as well. And the Beasts. Takes the tracer rounds. You know what? Let's give him. Let's give him the EMP bomb. There is the highest chance that we're going to see that in action. And Tapper here. Just in case we need to shred something. Okay, shredding, shredding. And throughout that looks like a good setup. So let's go guys, second last mission. It is time for the network tower. Normally I take that as an extra like separate mission, but I fully appreciate it's typically a short one. So might as well jump into it and then do Waterworld. Okay, guess who just landed? Damn right, it's us, and we got four instead of three operatives. And for once, although there is a dark event, everybody started concealed. And I think we got a couple of extra bony as well. Squad side, yes, every every single one of us has squad side. Squad targeting and squad integrated communications. Yeah, so everybody has squad side. That's not too bad. That's actually quite good, thinking about it. Uh, because we would have three shots with our mech. And if we can position our mech on a high ground... Ooh. Thinking about it, that is actually quite good. As you order. Good. Beast moves up. Beast double moves. Tapper moves. Lockdown moves and Secundus moves. We're not in a hurry, so this can be a non oh, that is a non timed mission, so we can take our sweet jolly time here. Next up, moving in with a grapple hook. And moving all the way up, eventually seeing something. What are we dealing with? Mamba and Sentinels were the Overwatch guys, if I'm not entirely mistaken. Fantastic. Yep, squad side works just like a charm. All right, so this here will not trigger. Tapper begins to move to high ground as well and lock down. Lockdown finally moves up as well. And apparently that squad communication. Hmm. I wonder. I, I know that we all have uh, over, uh, squad side abilities, but something else was above one uh, additional one additional um, operative which is quite clear but and the squad side which is also clear but what else there was i think one additional buff Okay, so next turn we're going to engage. Yeah, we're not going for the Codex Prime, Normal Mutant, two Archon Sentinels. Okay, okay. Hmm. 
so a couple of uh, things number one I think it's quite clear that we would like to have kill zone Number two, could we position ourselves over here? Now that's still going to trigger that other pack. What about over here? All right, that's half cover, not perfect, but still good. And this here could be a starter. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, perfect. So eight protocol down here to beast. Because he's potentially going to be the one who takes most of the shots. And there's a good chance that the Mamba immediately will die. Yep, there we go. Well, I guess so much for the idea of uh, kill zone. That was a pretty bad idea. Instead, we're overdriving. In case of a doubt, overdrive and remove their overwatch. Shredding them nicely. Okay, not so good. our chance to hit this guy mm -hmm. I think what we're going to do instead is let's teamwork and the sentinel is almost down keep in mind we're still having two shots from the kill zone Apparently not needed because they decide to simply not attack. By the way, perfect timing for cereal. Oh, I forgot they can react on. Uh, it's covering fire. Should have kept that in mind. Okay, my bad. Oh, that was clearly... That was clearly foreseeable. There we go. Could have done that without even taking a hit. We're healing up. <clears throat> and for now, I think we're good to go. I'm waiting for Overdrive to come back. Beast down here can just go on to Overwatch. Has two Overwatch shots, actually, thanks to Waylay. Tapper moves in. Good, lesson learned here. Uh, Archon Sentinels are potentially the least uh, valuable targets when you do have a kill zone because their overwatch will not trigger but whatever you're doing is definitely going to trigger nice little hit Hundred 
percent and 91 percent i think we're going to take that 91 percent chance unfortunately the codex dodged moved up with personal shield all right Good, so the question of the day is, we do have an overwatch pick there, uh, we do have lightning reflexes, yes we do. Alright, moving up. Lightning reflexes, draws the overwatch shot. We are definitely going to move over here into full cover. Can't really see that mutant. That's unfortunate. Okay, but we can we can follow him and thanks to squad side we should be able to not only follow him but eventually kill him. Gotta be careful though, because there is a good chance that we're going to uh, run into enemies. Yep, there we go. Good, Secundus uh, continues to move over, to be honest. I like that uh, setup with the uh, team squad side. Oh, that's fantastic. We're going to use Beast here as a scout. All right. Everybody overwatches. So far the mission is pretty straightforward with the exception of uh, the suboptimal decision with the Sentinels. Everything else worked out well and we learned our lesson with the Sentinels so that's not going to happen again. That's really the important part in XCOM. It's not so much It's not so much uh, not being able to react optimally. Sometimes it's just a matter of do you learn from your mistakes. Archon Prime. That guy looks like we could do a mistake. Good, 100% or almost 100%. Hmm. We could hail of bullets, but that would not crit. 99% and hit him, that would be really good. Let's start shredding it. Nice little hit. That should be the kill. Could have done serial. Could have done serial in order to deal with him. We're soon going to take the high ground on the other um, on the other rooftop, and this prevents a psionic bomb. Oh, 
plus, of course, the duplication. We still got restoration, so we could heal. Not needed yet. Alright, moving up. Should not trigger anything. And this might be a crit at the kill. Hit yes, crit no. Moving up. And the beauty of fast movement. Gotta love to see it. Just so powerful. Alright, lockdown positions up here as well. Gotta take some better cover next turn. But overall, I think we're fine. Tepper is more heavily injured than anyone else, so he'll take the back. I will make an exception with Lockdown in terms of positioning her there. And we do have all the time in the world to finish this year, so well, let's just wait for now. Reload, Overwatch, and reload Overwatch. There's one more pack inside. I want full throttle back, uh, overdrive rather. Uh, mm, which means two more turns. Good. That's a perfect time for reload. And we got overdrive just back. Secundus could move a bit closer and everybody else is in a great position. It seems like the guys are on the rooftop. Yeah, the movement indicator was a bit strange. So not surprising to see that they are indeed on the rooftop. Okay, Serial, yes please. Does that kill? No, it does not. Setting these guys up. Credit armor, yes please. Even more shredded armor. Secundus is doing a fantastic job here. In the meantime, let's trigger Overwatch if needed. Okay, so this should trigger Overwatch, but we do have Lightning Reflexes. Alright, good enough. Um, 8 Protocol for Frontliner. And thanks to Squad Side. Everybody can join the fray. Damn, really good hit. I like it. A sniper doesn't have an angle.
Moving a bit back. Okay, I was I was hoping the pistol could also benefit from squad side, but it just works like normal uh, squad side. So pistols are off. It's fine. Don't worry. Funnily enough, the guy just completely messed his position up. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. 100% efficiency. Well, there's also one way of entering that whole building. And I think we're done. There is no more resistance, right? Yeah, we're indeed done. Well, too bad. It was a fun mission whilst it lasted. But as always... Secundus did a fantastic job here. I like how the mech turned out even in in that uh, in that choose to lose campaign. The shredding alone, the range, um, hacking, hacking capability, the fire support, even with the basic basic equipment, mechs are being able to carry their weight. So truly appreciate that. And it kind of brings us to the end of today's episode. I'll just do the um, finalization here and prepare for the Waterworld uh, mission. Next episode, we'll start directly in Waterworld. As always, that'll be a two-parter. Uh, first, the normal um, portion and then the final room. We're ready, guys. It is happening. The yes, Choose to Lose campaign is going into its last uh, double Shabs. episode. It so it had been and great fun. And I am super happy that it worked out so well. We um, I'll give my final verdict on everything, on as always, Shabs. in the last episode. Thank you for watching. For if you enjoy the content, years, hit that super smash button down there and leave a comment below. That helps the algorithm and makes me happy. Thanks, guys, and see you in two days.